Hello, everyone, and welcome to our webinar on company level engagement. Now, this is a topic that we care very much about at InnoTrends as account based analytics, account based, account -based market are crucial for B2B businesses. Businesses in which a user comes and creates an account, another user might finish the onboarding process, and maybe they invite a third user that adds the credit card and pays. And you don't want to send an email to the first two users asking them if they want to upgrade to pay, right? Because the company is already a customer. But that's what's happening with the most products out there that send emails because they are user-based, not company-based. Well, not with user list. User list is different because companies are at the core of their platform. And we have today with us from user list, the co-founder of the company, Jane Portman, who I'm really excited to have as a guest here. Hi, Jane. I've had a sneak peek at your presentation and I'm really, really excited about what you're going to present. So I'll just let you take over from here. Thanks so much, Claudio, for the nice introduction. The topic is indeed a hot one. Um, let me share my slides for a second. Please. OK. All right. Can you see my screen all right? Yes, it looks great. Awesome. Well, company, 11, company level engagement, it's an incredibly important topic, but we do think it's really under discussed in the product circles because everybody is talking about customer data, everybody's talking about engagement, but unfortunately somehow the company structure just escapes people. And we might, we might know why, because it's really complex to implement sometimes. And it's just complex to wrap your head about it. But there are many ways to start thinking about it. And maybe we can reveal some of those ways for you today. Um, at least you can start thinking about this, right? So the problem is that most tools these days um, still deal with individual users. And I'm talking email tools, customer data tools, uh, customer success tools, anything that deals with uh, accounts and, and users. Software still pretends that we're onboarding individual customers, while in fact, all SaaS companies, uh, almost all SaaS companies, especially B2B SaaS companies, deal with teams. So as a result, this uh, many problems arise. Um, if you try to convey customer um, account data, uh, then you have to duplicate the same account information for each of the users. And when you open your tool, you, you can see that you have, you know, 1,200 people in your account, but you're not even sure how many companies and how many customers that means. And you're not sure like who belongs where, you're not sure about the company size and you can't filter by user count. You can't do anything meaningful to your customer base, which is a really a huge problem for founders. And then founders and product managers have to go to tools like Stripe to find their accounts and then somehow fish the relationships between companies and individual people try to figure out who started the account and many other things. Um, and that is not even touching on complex relationships when one user can belong to multiple accounts. Um, and uh, we also are really very limited in terms of onboarding because we try to onboard individual user and the individual user might sign up and another person might, uh, you know, handle the billing and the third editor might do the actual work. And if you look at uh, those individual journeys, they look troubling. They basically just did one or two steps. But if you look at the company in general, they're doing fine because it's a team effort. So bringing those events together in one single timeline uh, for the company, but not getting in, you know, but not losing touch of uh, individual people who are the ultimate recipients of any communications. This is a big challenge and uh, every business uh, solves its problem, solves this problem in their own you know, way, especially that the tools are limited. The solution to, uh, to this is to think about company data and somehow uh, implement it uh, in your customer management and customer messaging setup depending on what tools you use. Um, 
in UserList, uh, like Claudio mentioned, uh, we added this uh, functionality this spring, and we felt like we stumbled across, I don't know, uh, product market fit diamond or something because the reception of this was great. And uh, we had suspected that nobody else does this, but really, in fact, um, this is now our unique selling proposition. This is a screen of what our uh, company profiles look like. But this presentation is not about user list even though this is one of our uh, raving reviews here on the screen. Um, this presentation about your mindset, and uh, you can even do some of the company um, accounts if you use software that deals with individual users. You just have to think about you know, duplicating the data somewhere um, in different ways, but you can, at least, uh, you can at least start doing something about it. And uh, to start, thinking about this, right? You need to think about the data model. Uh, I want to show you some illustrations. And this is the simplest relationship um, that every tool can support when one user means one company. You can see that uh, Jane is an admin in company A and Mark is an admin in company B. This is really easy. A lot of uh, B2C products, I don't know, Netflix or something, um, can do this, even though Netflix does support families now, so it's not a good example anymore. Uh, but then things start getting complex, and here is a typical one-to-many relationship. When company A has three team members and company B has you know, two team members, and you can see that they don't overlap, so one user cannot be a member of multiple teams, which you know that in real life is not always true, and they overlap, which uh, results in, in the so-called many-to-many uh, relationship model. And this is where real struggle starts <laughs> because uh, you have to somehow think that uh, Mark Jones might be an editor in one team. They might be an admin in another team. What kind of communications should they should be getting? Uh, should they be properly onboarded um, at team A? Should, be the, uh, should they be onboarded at team B? What's happening? And, and really, how do you even reflect this information in, um, in, in your data? The, the way we solved it in UserList, um, and we decided to implement many-to-many -many from the start, um, is by introducing three levels of data, not just two. You can see that some data uh, exists on the user level. And this is typically something that relates to the user profile in general, like some of their individual settings, maybe their name, uh, their uh, profile picture, whatever data you have on them. Uh, then you can have information company level, the typical stuff, company name, billing plan, billing status, what features they're using, what they, what's their global uh, total activity in the account. And there exists the third level, the relationship level, which um, allows you to add events and properties um, on this user in this particular company. This is that unique link that makes the complex network relationship possible. And um, in this, on this relationship level, that's exactly where you would store the role of this particular user in this particular company, uh, their events that they're doing in this particular company, et cetera, et cetera. And then the tool can use this data to calculate like what's happening to this person and do many other things. For example, uh, Sparkle is our imaginary photo editing tool. And uh, let's say on the user level on the right, we're storing users first name and last name. On the company level, the typical stuff, company name, billing state, plan, trial end date, uh, next billing date, billing interval, um, number of photos, and number of albums. And then on the relationship level, we have that account role and uh, photos and albums, the particular contribution of this user to this team. Once again, um, it's not, uh, it's really helpful to understand the difference between properties and events. Uh, properties can be used for the majority of the occasions. Uh, and uh, the events, in addition to properties, they have a timestamp. They are important when you need to inspect the timeline, when you need to calculate the frequency of something, when you need to figure out when something happened last. That's only the case when you need the events. Most of the other stuff, 
product usage, um, you know, the total number of uh, projects in their software. You can do that all with properties. This really helps you to clean, uh, keep your account clean. But folks at InnoTrends really do know that because you also do this a lot, I guess, for your customers. Um, how do customer data platforms handle companies? As far as we know, um, Intercom can do companies, uh, but not in the most exciting way. Uh, they can, um, many to many relationships are still a challenge. A lot of other SaaS tools um, are still pretending that they don't exist. For example, um, basically Drip, Customer.io, MailChimp, these are all individual, uh, individual serving individual users. Userless is trying to do our best to reflect the data model properly, and that's been our strong selling point. Um, interesting that Inner Trends had started account first, as we have, as we have talked about this in the beginning before uh, before the call. So you do have accounts firsthand, and you do have yes. um, individual folks, which is amazing. And then uh, we just recommend when you're picking your tools, uh, so that you think about it. Seg uh, customer data platforms like Segment or their recent alternative rather stack, they do have this notion of groups or teams uh, on their uh, customer data. So the, the basics for it is, is in there. So if you're using Segment, you might look into, uh, into that relationship. However, I don't really know exactly if they support those uh, relationship properties very well. So if you, you you need some consultation, feel free to um, get in touch they, and we'll discuss your <laughs> case. They do not. They, they, they do not. Uh, but okay. you, can, you can hack it like you can do it with many other things, which I think it's a mistake because when you start hacking, um, the next person comes in, doesn't know what happens, there is no documentation, and data gets uh, in a bad way. Uh, but yes, um, um, user company no relationship on a segment or other second right um and in the next slides we will uh, discuss some situations uh, real life takeaways that you can start uh, implementing like today with your existing tool so one if you can do that uh, try and segment companies or accounts not users this is a great help you will one thing that will happen for sure, even if you don't implement anything else, is, is that you will have an insight on how many uh, accounts are doing what. This is already much better than saying that, you know, you have activated 500 people. Like, so what? Are there three accounts or are there uh, 500 accounts? In this case, you will at least see uh, the distribution of companies in your different life cycle stages. Um, when we talk about segmentation, I cannot stress more that you do need life cycle segments. Um, typically when we talk to marketers, they're like segment by age or segment by source or segment by something else. When we talk about products, you need segments for life cycle stages, the, the trials, the paying customers, the canceled accounts, at least something like that. And this will give you clarity. So segment companies, not individual users. Um, this is an il illustration of what this looks like in our software. Uh, you can see how many companies are in each segment. And then uh, you can trigger campaigns based on company events, now, which is another great way to just to track when something has happened on the uh, company level. And when that happens, you can decide uh, who will be receiving notifications about it. This is how we implemented at UserList. You can see that company joins a segment trialing companies then uh, you can filter out by role who is getting notifications about that. Um, again, something that's related to user onboarding for individual user, you should probably be better off um, um, basing that on the user event or user segment. But when it comes to everything else, then the company events are the way to go for that or company segments. Customize your onboarding flows for each role. This is super easy. You can do this with any software. You just have a need to have a field uh, property that reflects the user role. This means that the account admin, which will probably receive one thing, and if they are an editor or something like that, they will receive a different 
shorter, more concise um, onboarding sequence. This is how we increase relevance. And relevance is our number one key for everything, for being um, having high open rates, high engagement rates. Uh, anything is dramatically increased if the message is relevant. If the message is not relevant, this is basically just increasing frustration. You don't want that for your brand. You want to, them to be relevant to the user. And don't make assumptions about roles. I have, we have heard so many founders say that, oh, we know that it's most likely the founder who's starting the account, or this is most likely the, I don't know, the bookkeeper who's starting this account, and, uh, this account if you're doing like financial software. But you never know. Don't make assumptions. Ask them. It's really not a challenge to add an additional field somewhere in your user signup flow for example, ask them what they do and then just record this information. And um, for example, customize your onboarding sequence on, based on that data. Another thing you can do is to minimize onboarding for their second plus company. This is also easy to do with every piece of software. Mm. The clean hack for this is to have a special um, property that outlines the number of accounts that the user belongs to. And if this number is two or more, just don't still send the onboarding sequence or do something else about it. In old days, we all remember that um, Slack has been, you know, when you start a new account, the little friendly Slack bot would show you around once again. And this is not nice because Everybody knows how Slack works. And if it's like your 50th, um, uh, 50th account or something, and you still see the same Slack bot, this is not great. But um, as far as we know, we've, uh, we've talked about this. Uh, Slack has uh, this way of uh, creating individual users for each account. So they don't really do this many to many relationship very well. They just create individual instances. And that's why you get individual boarding every time. I think they've gotten better at this, actually, <laughs> because for the last few teams I've joined, I haven't seen the Slack bot too much. But again, this is a challenge even for a company of Slack size. Imagine how many companies don't think about this at all. Um, how to get started? Pick any tool, implement a simple tracking plan, and uh, just, just start implementing your campaigns with this um, company knowledge in mind and just having it in mind already helps. That's basically what I'd like to convey to every listener uh, who is uh, listening to us today. And if you'd like to join UserList, you're welcome. Uh, there is a sign up link which gives you um, a little discount and that's all promotion we're going to get. Now <laughs> let's, let's jump to uh, questions and things like that. I realized I had my microphone muted. Uh, yes, let's jump into questions because um, before we go into the questions from the audience, I'd like to to jump on a few, a few of them. So, I'd like to discuss a little bit about the many to um, many to many um, model, which indeed is the most is the most complicated one and. One, one question we've seen a lot from, from different companies, and I'm very curious how you recommend addressing this. When, when I have an account like in Slack, like you, like, I think Slack is a great example. And uh, Slack is about to send me a notification. I'm probably in 20 something uh, Slack communities, companies, call them what you like. And Slack is going to notify me about something that needs to happen somewhere. How will I know if they just write an email to me, Claudio, what I should do and where? Because I have 20 companies. What do I do? How do you recommend for a company like Slack to address something like this? It depends on how critical this information is for, for the user. So in Slack, when you get an notification, it's super critical to understand where what team it's coming from. So with your design efforts, you need to let them know. Uh, Slack is doing that by showing the channel icon or something. As email 
designers. Uh, our tools are the subject line, the preview text, and the body, the first few lines that would help you establish the context. So you can, uh, you know, do a prefix in, in, in form of the account uh, name uh, on the subject line. You can include it in the preview text or you can link in the first couple lines to your account. But then again, not all information is that critical and related to the account. For example, general onboarding tips and tricks and stuff like that. It's not necessarily um, account specific. In that case, you can omit this information and focus on the value and the content. Thank you. And let's go in a little e even more complex scenario. Let's introduce another level to this, agencies. Because there is a company, there is a relationship, there is a user, but many SaaS businesses also work with agencies that manage multiple companies. So there is even an extra level uh, on, top of, uh, on top of things. And um, how, would you, how would you recommend to address this? So I'm an agency, I had a new company, and I invite the first user for that company to, to onboard. Uh, how would you look at this relationship uh, in user list? How would you set things up for the emails to go? Would you consider the agency at all? Would you send any emails to the agency uh, in a scenario like this? That's a great question. Um, we haven't considered agencies. We have considered consultants, though. So consultant is merely simply another user who can belong to multiple accounts. Um, and then they can switch between those accounts in the top right corner like everybody else can. Um, however, if your business depends on that and you do have many, it's a common use case, then you can probably go um, take this farther in the product development. And for example, in user list, you can switch between accounts in the top right corner. It's a simple drop down. There is no overview, but some tools do have this overview splash screen yes. when you join and you can take that as far as you want. You can make it a dashboard. You can make it anything you want. Um, but I imagine this is pretty costly in development. So only do that if is. this is a very important use case. Yeah, it's the, the way we look at it, especially in terms of emails, like when you want to communicate uh, with the users, uh, we, we do see two different scenarios where the agency is the main player. And in that case, we consider the agency at the company level. Uh, and yes, we don't send them all the onboarding emails because we they are an agency. They've done it many times and you treat them like that. But sometimes the agencies are just users. So the company is the main thing and the agency goes at the user group. Like it's a group agency and then it's uh, the relationship would be agency and the user would be the person from the agency. And yes, you, again, you can treat them specifically based on that uh, relationship. You uh, just touched yeah. on on the whole can of worms, which is called, you know, primary and secondary users. That is a whole range of businesses who do, you know, teachers and students. And those students, you know, it can be a B2B SaaS. And we've, we've had these among customers who have like, you know, thousands of teachers in their database. But then as each teacher can have whole schools about them. And... And then there's the billing question. Do you want to bill for those users? Uh, are these uh, temporary users? Do they need to get just simple onboarding and like go and be purged? Or do they stay? Ooh, <laughs> don't even start. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, uh, it is crazy and it is complex. And as you said at the beginning, it's why most people don't really go into it. But there is a gold mine in there because if you actually talk to companies, not just with users, uh, and you address by roles, you address them by roles and um, you are basically aware of them. Um, I think that can open a lot of opportunities for the business. And um, I, I'll, I want to, I, we also started having questions from the audience, but I just want to, to say something here uh, before we go there. I've seen a lot of companies that struggle to actually define their model. Uh, we, uh, uh, when we onboard customers at Trends, we ask them, what's your account structure? It's exactly what you showed, one-to-one, one-to-many, many-to-many. 
And so often they choose one and then a few days they come back, oh no, it's actually the other one, but we didn't really consider that. And so they don't really give a lot of, they, they think it's easy, but it is complex. It is important to, to, uh, to think about it and to have it well structured in your own database, which I know if you already have a database, it's almost impossible. But having it well structured on your end will actually make it very easy to work with user list because you'll need to send those data to, to user list, to relationship data, user based on the company data. So you need to have it clean on your end. Uh, yeah. Can I ask you a question? I've, I've yes. seen two contradicting opinions here in, the, you know, in this industry. And one is you'd better get started with something. And another one, uh, don't get started until you have through uh, thought through every single detail of your data tracking scheme and everything. And um, what camp do you fall into? Because uh, so, the, the, the pitfall with this uh, perfect scheme is that the perfect is not really achievable, especially the first take. So, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm not I'm not in the perfect scheme. I'm in the other scheme. But what the scheme I was talking about was your own backend. Sometimes the backend right. of the company, you are like, we go and we ask companies, one of the steps in the inner trend setup is data validation. And we simply need to say how many accounts were created in the last month. And this is how many inner trends has, is it 100% accurate? And we say, we don't know. And that's, that's crazy because their own backend is not well structured. Uh, on your question, no, you need to start with something, but I'm somewhere in the middle. Everything you start with needs to be clean and well thought. So start with very little, 10 events. You only need to track 10 events and no more, but those 10 events need to be spot on. Mm -hmm. And then add this 11th one and the 20th one and go further. But what you track needs to be clean and accurate and validated. That's, that's my philosophy at least. Yeah, I love this. Uh, you, so with, for Intertrends, the, the quest is to, to clean the, the data. Uh, for us, the quest is for user onboarding to actually also get people set up their messaging. And, you know, messaging yes. and data, they go hand in hand, but people really not think about it this way. You first need to decide what you want to send and then what data you want for it but somehow also keep it in mind for the future. It's challenging. <laughs> it is. It is very challenging. And it's, uh, it's definitely a topic I hope we'll get to explore more because there should be a relationship between data and message. Data should, or not should, data can educate your messaging. It can happen uh, if you do it right. Um, so yeah, but that's for another topic. Let's go to a question in... Um, from, uh, from the questions list, we use HubSpot as our CRM. How do you recommend integrating HubSpot with a tool like UserList? I would need a refining like question. What do you need? So there are two aspects of, of SaaS messaging and uh, CRM. One is uh, keeping track of your leads and the other is keeping track of your customers and talking to both. And UserList can do both leads and customers and HubSpot can do both leads and customers. HubSpot is a popular marketing choice because it's free to start and just overall a good household name. So if you want to keep if you want to keep HubSpot for marketing leads, then um, then you have two different lists and you need to figure out a way for them to talk to each other. And uh, we just added marketing list to user list, which allows you to keep track of both, which really simplifies this problem of tools talking to each other. And syncing subscribes and subscribes, uh, trying to find out like how to import the lead data into um, a customer um, field. It's, it's, it's all a lot of challenges. So it depends on what kind of integrations you want to, well, to happen. Yeah, I'll just add here, HubSpot is not yet capable of many-to-many. -many. It can only do one company to, uh, like if a person is part of a company, it cannot be part of another company. So that, mm -hmm. complicates, uh, that complicates things there. Um, how do you measure success for your tool apart from open rates? Do you link your success to revenue in any way? Mm. 
is that for your tool, like for user list or for your for uh, user list? For user okay, list. Um, we do have certain engagement metrics, and they're super simple. Um, we do track the number of custom uh, number of uh, ultimate users tracked. We do track um, the number of uh, active campaigns. That's probably the two most like top engagement metrics. I might be missing out on something uh, important here, but uh, it sounds like the top two. We also check certain feature flags for like how many um, sending domains they have, how many snippets they're using. So basically pr a property flag for each of the features to identify advanced users. But really you can get pretty uh, successful if you just have a couple campaigns in place. When we do identify opportunity for improvement, then we would look for accounts who only have a couple campaigns set up because there is always more you can do. And that's when we can, you know, expand on the customer success front. Super, thank you. Another one, in your experience, what surprising insight did you get when you saw and analyzed data at the company level? Did this impact your business strategy in any way? Um, I'll take the liberty to start with this one and you can take, uh, take on. Um, I'm, I mean, I cannot, the insights from user-based level, user-based level data to account-based level data for B2B companies are completely different. And what Jane said in the presentation with a company having five users and three of them just signed up to go in to get, get the invoices once a month. If you'd look at the engagement level and you say like, how many active users do I have? Or how many, um, uh, like, what are people doing in my product? What's their frequency? What are they doing? You'll think you're, you'll have a terrible image. Like, oh, I have so many users are not doing anything in my product. They are not getting value. Well, if you call that company, they might be one of the most engaged companies in your business. And every single one of those five people might be very, very happy because they talk to the guy who does most of the work. Um, so it's simply not accurate. You'll get an image that's just not true. Uh, even uh, onboarding rates, 100 people signing up, 20 of them finishing the onboarding process, you'll say my onboarding rate for users is 20%. But if those 100 people are from 40 companies and those 20 people that finish the onboarding process are from 20 companies, your onboarding rate is 50%. Very different. You don't have an onboarding problem, you might have a totally different problem. So it's just, if you are a B2B, I'm yet to find a valuable insight from user-based data. That's how I would put it. But we can't ignore individual users because they are the ultimate messaging touch points. We are not talking to companies. So they have to exist hand in hand still. They have, I, I fully, fully agree with you on this, but I think it's important to link them together. So absolutely, something we do at InnerTrends, for example, if a user opened an email, we consider the company opened an email. We consider that that company was touched by that email. It knows the content through one of their users. It knows uh, it knows that uh, that thing, uh, what you sent them. Um, but yes you can go further and analyze and say, okay, how many users of that company open the emails? Is there a correlation between more people opening versus less people opening? So definitely it goes towards user level, but in a company context, yeah. Yeah, the, the, the point you're making there, I, I don't even think that the user-based data should be considered exactly like you're saying, because it doesn't make sense. It's, it's the account success that matters and the account engagement that matters. Super. Um, those, uh, those are the questions we have. Um, I'll let you give us our final, your final thoughts on this. And uh, thank you very much for taking part in this. Uh, great stuff. Uh, and uh, yes, thank you. Appreciate that. And uh, it's, it's great to chat with somebody who have been facing the same exact problem with your customers. And uh, I'm glad to hear that you've been account uh, first, so you haven't really struggled with that much. <laughs> thank you. Um, thank you, everyone. Thank you for participating. The recording will be available after the presentation. Uh, have a great day, everyone.
Thank you. Vale.